Good morning and good evening, <clears throat> and also wherever you are. And uh, this is uh, uh, actually the sixth annual section of the China Globalization, China Global Think Tank, Innovation Think Tank. So, welcome to all of you. And I'm uh, Henry Huiyao Wang, founder and president of the Center for China and Globalization. Thank you for tuning in this uh, special opening dialogue of our sixth annual China Global Think Tank Innovation Forum 2021, live from uh, CCG head office here in Beijing. We're in our conference uh, uh, room. Uh, today, we are very honored, actually very pleased to have an, an old friend, also Dr. John Hammer. He's the president. Uh, of one of the most prominent think tanks in the US, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, where short name the CSIS. So he's uh, uh, taking out his uh, time in the evening here with us. So we're going to explore the uh, topics that are centered about think tanks, about American foreign policy, about uh, pandemic changes, about uh, think tank innovation, which is uh, our conference today, but also about uh, uh, area we can collaborate. I would like to briefly uh, introduce uh, uh, Dr. John Hammer. Um, he's the president and CEO and a Langong chair in American leadership at CSIS. Before joining CSI, he served as the 26th uh, US uh, Deputy Secretary of Defense and uh, held uh, senior positions in the US Senator Armed Service Committee and in the Congressional Budget Office. He has numerous uh, uh, involvement uh, in his uh, previous career. And he received his uh, PhD with distinction from SAS uh, of the John Hopkins University in 1978. So, so <laughs> welcome, uh, John, and uh, it's great to see you again. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang, and congratulations to you and the Center for China and Globalization. My goodness, what a wonderful job you've done in building this institution. It's very impressive. Thank you. Actually, we, we are today, you know, we are having uh, uh, this uh, sixth uh, annual Global Think Tank Innovation Summit. So we have very uh, privileged to invite you as the opening uh, speaker. And uh, we're going to have followed by a, a next panel. We're going to have a, a, a five think tanks uh, from U.S. and China to talk about further. But to this, for this one, you know, we are, we are actually entering a very interesting time. And uh, as a uh, uh, during our pre uh, 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 this uh, start of the discussion, we know that the world has has changed uh, uh, fundamentally. We are we are facing pandemic, and we are we're having a lot of uh, challenges, and uh, and uh, the, the the world is really at a crossroad. And uh, so, uh, given your uh, your experience uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the leading the think tank of uh, uh, you know one of the leading think tank in the world. Uh, so, so we would like to open in uh, with you on the, on the think tank topic. Uh, as we know, you see, this is a, uh, is a think tank that was founded in 1962, which is uh, almost uh, 50, 60 years ago. And, uh, and you've been at home, you, you've been <laughs> running that think tank for 20 years. Uh, make that into, uh, you know, when, 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 you, when you come to that think tank, the think tank still have a deficit. Now you make that into one of the most influential think tanks uh, in, the, in the world. So. So what what what's your experience in in your share with us? How, your your how how you uh, have built up this think tank and what is your experience uh, uh, and uh, what is the uh, uh, your your uh, uh, recommendation? You know you know for our think tank community because we are having a think tank conference today. Yeah yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Wang, I um, boy, I I made so many mistakes uh, when I came to CSS, and you're right, we were. We were in very deep trouble when I first came to CSIS, uh, but we were able to get out of it. I think the our, in one sense, our poverty was helpful because we were so poor back then. We and we had to raise ninety-seven percent of our budget every year, so it made. I had to listen carefully to what the market wanted. I, I, I didn't have the luxury of just doing my own thing. We had to listen to what were the problems people were experiencing and how could we make a contribution. Uh, and then the 
key to success is the quality of your staff. Uh, it, it, I inherited a staff that wasn't very strong, to be honest. Uh, and th the entire journey of my 21 years has been to hire really good people. And so that's, uh, you know, hire good people, give them a lot of flexibility uh, and, and uh, establish the culture so that people feel that they have to do honest and objective work. That's really great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> talent is always, almost, uh, always important. Uh, so, so I'd like to actually, uh, 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 you know, come to the recent uh, CSIS re released uh, a report. Uh, it's called "Advancing U.S.-China Healthy Security Cooperation in an Area of a Strategic uh, Competition," uh, which revolved around the area of U.S.-China can work together, uh, for example, on the health. Uh, including vaccine, travel, uh, public health infrastructure, uh, biosafety, supply chain, and the countering disinformation. And uh, so, as you know, that uh, think tank uh, these days, you know, can play a very active role in terms of making all those recommendations. So, what do you think now? Uh, with uh, we are facing this uh, uh, once in a century, probably, uh, catastrophe of this uh, pandemic. Uh, where did you see where we can get out of that and how we can really work together? I mean, internationally at, uh, uh, you know, multilateral level. And of course, also China, U.S. as two largest uh, uh, leading country uh, in the economy, in the world. How we can work together and things like that. Yeah, these are, this is a very large and important question. Um, you know, there's a central paradox that we've experienced these last two years. Um, you know, it's very clear with something like a pandemic that no one country can act on its own and protect itself. I mean, there has to be international cooperation to deal with something like a global pandemic. But people that lead countries naturally respond to the pressure within their own country. And so there's a parochialism that gets that becomes very strong in a period like this. Every, every country in the world basically tried to find solutions for themselves uh, to deal with a pandemic. Uh, and it highlighted that international health organizations are not strong organizations. So I, I do think there is some very fundamental thinking that we need to do because we're not China isn't going to give up its capacity to, to decide its own path for health, public health. We're going to hold on to that ourselves. But we do have to find ways where we can cooperate. I think the bright spot over the last two years uh, was with the medical research community that where there were international networks that that. Uh, communicated with each other and, and joined together in, in a shared effort. In the private sector, international cooperation was very impressive. The, you know, in the public sector, governments, the cooperation wasn't so good, you know, but in the private sector, it was very good. And so I think it's a bit of a, an idea about what we could do in a broader sense, so we could work together. How do we help our respective civil societies to work more closely on medical preparedness? I think that's a real opportunity. Now, on specifically on China, look, we've got we, we you know, we're I, I'm unhappy about the direction we're in right now. There's a lot of tension between our two countries. The, we, you know, it's I, I don't. We have to find ways where we can work on shared problems. And certainly public health, global public health is a shared problem. So I think there's an opportunity here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Actually, uh, uh, I, I know that uh, both U.S. and China are really favored that uh, patent wavering, uh, you know, for, for developing countries in terms of producing the vaccine. And, uh, you know, hopefully at the coming up at WTO ministerial meetings, you know, WTO, US and China can reach something on these uh, new efforts in terms of uh, supporting developing countries and getting vaccine. 
So uh, you know, un unless everyone is safe, we're finally safe. <laughs> we got to make a uh, make a make a, a lot of uh, lead on that. Uh, uh, you're right. You know, China and the U.S. can uh, work uh, many ways and uh, uh, on that. And and you you also mentioned about U.S. China uh, cooperation, and and also you're not satisfied with the with the with the current situation. Uh, 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 that uh, you think there's there's you know uh, ways to collaborate, and uh, so we're glad to see that. Uh, uh, you know, China and the U.S. has actually made a joint statement that uh, uh, COP26 on climate change. You know, so, so that is another big area. You know, we can collaborate, uh, uh, and uh, you know, pandemic could come again, or you know, even yeah. we are contained. You know, so what do you think about the you know climate change and the things that we can also work together in terms of the common the common background? Uh, well, I, I, I do think it is an area that we can work together. I'm, in, you know, I'm I'm impressed by a lot of the, the forward-looking policies that China has, for example, on electric vehicles. I mean, it's, it's impressive what China is proposing to do for itself. Um, you know, obviously, you are a country in transition, energy transition. We are too, but you're in a country with energy transition. And so I think there are opportunities that we could explore uh, where can we collaborate on mm. climate change? Um, you know, I mean, it, we do have to find a number of things where we can at least have conversations with each other, look at joint, potentially joint projects, just like in the healthcare area. I mean, there was actually a fairly robust collaboration between our medical scientists, you know, for many years, which was a good thing because it became the foundation point for the cooperation that did exist. For, for the pandemic. So we should look for these opportunities, Dr. Yeah, Wong. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, you know, John Hammer, uh, Henry. So, so what, what, uh, what uh, 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 I think that uh, really make the, uh, you know, the two countries uh, uh, interesting now is that the world has a lot of uh, uh, common demand, actually, you know, the, for example, the, the infrastructure, we, we see that uh, worldwide, there is a, there is a huge, uh, 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 demand for infrastructure, developing countries, but also developed countries. I noticed that uh, European uh, uh, leader just announced uh, last week they're going to uh, come up with 350 billion euro uh, on uh, uh, you know putting the your uh, your euro, euro, euro gateway, you know EU gateway uh, project for infrastructure. President uh, uh, Biden mentioned about uh, you know past. Uh, his 1.2 trillion uh, uh, infrastructure bill. And on the same day, he talked to President Xi uh, 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 well, after he signed that bill. And uh, of course, China has this uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative, which has been carrying on for the last eight years. So, so infrastructure-wise, I mean, we had the World Bank, we had the uh, uh, BRICS New Development Bank, uh, we had the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. You know, on this, uh, and also G7 proposed the Build back better, uh, D3W by President Biden. So, do you think that we can really, you know, work together on those uh, uh, infrastructure where I think we have the biggest de denominator, biggest uh, draw of uh, of the future benefits for everyone, and then that's where probably can sustain us for the next uh, half a century uh, of of uh, prosperity and success and and uh, and growth uh, potential. So, what do you think about that? You know, all those areas that we could uh, work on infrastructure. Yeah. You know, there's a there's an astounding demand around the world for infrastructure building. Uh, in some places, for brand new infrastructure. In some places, like in the United States, for modernizing our infrastructure. It's uh, you know, I will I'll be honest. It's rather embarrassing to look at the state of a lot of America's bridges and roads. Our airports are not they're they're d disappointing. So there's a lot that we should do. But globally, infrastructure is a major issue. And I think what we should probably do is, you know, start by looking at what are the areas where we know that there is a trend we're all going to want to deal with, such as uh, how, do, how do we build sustainable infrastructure, infrastructure that has a revenue base underneath it. So it doesn't become a white elephant, you know, it doesn't become a... Uh, you know, a very giant project that that can't support itself financially. So I think there's some financial things. I think we need to find ways to help uh, third, third world countries 
to do a better job of managing complex uh, tender offerings. Uh, this is a complicated thing. Infrastructure projects are big and elaborate and complex. Helping other countries do a better job of deciding what's in their interest, what is sustainable. Those, I think, would be things we could work on together. 